Hey everybody, um, just wanted to do a quick video now that the Peer Scholar activity has begun um, to give you a little bit of context, uh, a, a sense of what it's about. And, and you're going to actually see some videos in the instructions, in the phase one instructions that I really encourage you to, to check out um, that really do walk you through, you know, why are we doing this Peer Scholar activity with you and how does it work? You know, how, how do things break down? So there's a couple of videos that will highlight that. But I also just wanted to spend a little bit of time here connecting this specific peer scholar activity to the to the class in general. Uh, what you'll see, so we talked a lot about uh, scientific literacy, and you know the ultimate place we would like you guys to get is you know if you run into some issue or some you, there's a debate about the reality of some claimed fact or you've heard something on the TV or radio that sounds a little. Um, you're not sure you believe it. Uh, and if you'd re really like to do, you know, some proper research, uh, then being able to do something like going to Google Scholar, searching and finding what, what are called primary sources, you know, research published in peer reviewed journals. And remember, we talked about how those peer, that peer review process ensures that the, the article itself um, is you know, a relatively high quality piece of research that you can trust. Uh, and so we would love you being able to go to the journals directly, read those articles and understand what you're reading, be able to think about them deeply. So rather than what the journalists tell you or what your friends tell you, to be able to go right to the science and, and get it yourself. Now, that's a bit more difficult process than it seems. Um, Google Scholar can help you find those articles, but when you get to the articles, what you're going to realize is people working with, within some field develop a jargon um, and they develop certain shared assumptions. Uh, and so once you work within a field for a while, it's relatively easy to read papers written within that field. But when you're a newcomer, uh, the jargon and these assumptions that are not made explicit can make it really difficult to read those first few journal articles. But it's really important to get through that, <laughs> to, to, to read those first few journal articles. And so that's really what the Peer Scholar activity is about, uh, is, is about you guys now, we're going to connect you to two research articles. Uh, you're going to write about one of them, but, but you can feel free to write about whichever one you wish. Uh, and that means you're going to, when you assess, which we'll talk about in a second, you're going to see students who've written about the other paper as well. So you're ultimately going to come to know both of these. They both include experiments. And really what we want you to do is focus on one experiment. So one experiment in one of the papers. Uh, and, and try to show us you really understand that experiment. So we're going to ask you to do two things. One is to write a summary uh, and the other is to do a next step. So let's start talk about the summary first. Here we're just basically getting you to use what you learned in chapter two about the scientific method and to be able to take an experiment and tell us, okay, here's the theory that that experiment is related to. Here's the specific hypothesis, you know, derived from that theory that's being tested. Here are the variables, you know, the, the, the dependent variables and the independent variables um, that that they were that were done. Here's the basic research approach. Here's the basic, you know, yeah. And here's the results and what they mean. And so by being able to kind of tear apart something that you've just read and talk about those various things shows us that, that you've got, you know, you understand what research is about and you're able to look at a piece and kind of see those, those things. So that's step one to summarize that in your own words, absolutely critical. Don't plagiarize. It's just not worth it. Um, put it in your own words, please. Um, and, and sh that shows us that you are able to understand what you're reading. Okay. Then we want you to do the next step. The next step is the idea is for you to kind of think as a scientist. Now that you've read that experiment and you've thought about that theory, is there another experiment that you might do that would provide even more information about that theory? What would you do next? And this is something that researchers are, are challenged with all the time. You know, they read a, a research article that somebody else wrote, but usually when you really understand it, you start to think, but why, but, but did they look at that? Maybe something different from what they think is going on. Maybe it's really this, and we could do this experiment to tell what's going on. So I want you to start to think like a researcher. So not only to summarize, but to think about, okay, if I were doing the research, 
what would be the question I would want to, to assess next? And we're looking for you to come up with something that is, is theoretically relevant. So not just, oh, I would test this on hamsters because I want to know how hamsters behave. Why? Well, I don't know. Hamsters are cool. You know, we, we'd, we'd like there to be a reason, a rationale for the experiment that you suggest. Okay, so that's going to be your core task. And that's what you're going to be doing over the next roughly two weeks, you know, in, in, in what's called the create phase. You're going to be writing that summary and your, that, that next step. Um, you can find a whole bunch of information on Quarkus, you know, including a grading rubric um, so you can get a sense of what we'll be looking for in those things. Okay. Then we go into the next two steps, the assess phase and the reflect phase. And um, you'll learn a lot more about them when we get there. In fact, we have videos embedded in Peer Scholar to really kind of walk you through what, what we're asking you to do, why it's challenging, to explain why it's challenging, but also to help you reach that challenge. The challenge is going to be giving feedback to peers. So in the second step, you're going to see the work that some of your peers submitted. Uh, it's going to be presented ra uh, anonymously, selected randomly, and you're kind of going to be the teacher. You're going to kind of play our role. You're going to look at each piece of work and assess it. Uh, you're going to give it some positive feedback, something you thought was done well, but you're also going to give it some constructive feedback. So specifically, you're going to try to tell each peer some way they could improve their work and ultimately get a better grade. Um, and yeah, and you're going to do this for like six different peers, reading their work um, and then ultimately giving them feedback on how their work could be improved. As you do that, by the way, you're going to engage critical thinking, creative thinking, expressive communication as you express your views, receptive communication as you listen to others. So this is all about exercising those core skills of success as well. Uh, okay, and then there'll be a final step. So we'll go through the assess phase, and, and in that phase, you're going to give feedback to your peers. And then in the final reflect phase, you're going to see the feedback that your peers have associated with your work. Um, and so there'll usually be about six pieces of feedback there, and we're going to walk you through an analysis of that feedback first, and then we'll give you a chance to use that feedback to improve your work for final submission. Okay, and so that that improved one will be the one that, that ultimately receives the largest chunk of the grade. And so you can actually enhance your grade by listening effectively to your peers and incorporating some of their good suggestions into a revision. Um, by the way, not all peers give you good suggestions. So that's part of the fun of this. It's, it's not, we're not going to tell you to do what your peers say. We're going to tell you to think about what each peer says, and then decide for yourself whether to follow their advice or not. In fact, a very final step of the third phase will be a, a little reflection piece where we ask you peer by peer to, to show us you understood what that peer suggested, and then to tell us what you did about it, if anything. And so it might be, I didn't do anything. I, I chose not to follow this. And if you can justify that, that's okay. All right. So big, big picture then. You know, phase one is about in, uh, engaging with primary research and summarizing it and doing the next step. Phase two is about uh, giving advice to your peers on how their work could be better. And phase three is about learning from the advice your peers gave to you and improving your work from there. Okay, one other thing I want to mention. You'll notice the papers are specifically about... Um, public service announcements or trying to persuade people of, of some position, um, trying to change their opinion or affect their opinion in some way. The reason I chose those papers, I mean, so much is related to psychology, but I chose those papers for a reason this term, and that will connect to the work integrated learning project I'm going to tell you about soon. In that work integrated learning project, you're going to work with others in the class to create a public service announcement. Um, you know, some sort of thing. It could be a social media post. It could be a radio ad. It could be a TV ad, magazine ad, you know, however you want to mention. But something that, uh, that you would use to reach people and specifically to reach young people, especially ethnically diverse people, and to, to bring a message to them that you hope they'll consider and resonate with. And this will be a message around um, getting their cheeks swabbed so that their DNA is part of a database to help leukemia patients. Um, you're going to get that whole story in a bit. Uh, and, I, and I assure you, it's going to be, th this work integrated learning project we're doing this year is 
I think the most important thing I've ever done in this class uh, that we've ever done in this class because it's always us. It's never just me. Um, and so I think it's a really cool project. And the hope is by reading through these papers and you know thinking about it deeply in the context of this activity, you'll be starting to get ready for that next work integrated project. Uh, and so that's why those specific papers are there. Okay, so again, very clearly, you get to choose which paper you want to focus on. So you just have to pick one paper. And in fact, you really only have to pick one experiment within one of those papers as your primary focus uh, of what you're going to be talking about. But again, as you assess your peers, they may have picked a different experiment in a different paper. So you're going to become familiar with both papers. And one of the best things you could probably do is read both um, as a starting point. Okay, so... Office hours today, obviously. Um, if there's if there's questions about any of this, please feel free to come to office hours and ask them also on, on Monday. It's not a holiday next Monday, no. Um, so we'll have office hours then as well. Um, yeah, and enjoy it. You're, you're becoming scientists. You're engaging in the, in the world that scientists do, reading uh, other people's papers and then trying to think, what might I do if I wasn't working in that area? Cool. Enjoy it. Um, I will talk to you more soon. Bye-bye.